In this video, we will create the, the 3D building model found in the tutorial manual. It is a one-story building with a mezzanine. The first step to create the model is to set the program to work in 3D. Next, we need to adjust the grid in order to create the base of the building. So we'll create three divisions of seven and a half meter along the X direction. And three divisions of seven meters along the Z direction. We will set the grid on the horizontal plane and give it a name. We will make a top view and create the joint of the base of the building. So we use the add joint command and make a window around the joints where we want to create the joints. Next, we will create the columns by extruding the base joints in the vertical direction. We'll create two extrusions of 3.6 meters Next, we will create the members of the mezzanine and the roof in two different steps. The first thing to do is to have a front view, select the joints of the mezzanine level, hide the remaining of the structure, and move the grid at this elevation. This way we can create the members more easily. So let's create the members on the contour of the building. and then the members of the mezzanine. The first step is done. We will repeat the operation for the roof level. We'll create the contour beams and then the interior beams. So now the frame is created, we can define the floors. Again, here we will isolate each level in order to uh, create the floors. We'll create the default parameters of the surface, choose a joist distribution and set the number of joists to six. And create each floor surface. So that's the mezzanine.
Then we repeat the operation for the roof level. This time we will use 11 joist instead of 6 and create each surface. When the floors are created, we can assign a diaphragm to the surfaces of the mezzanine and the roof in order to stabilize the structure. This models the steel deck. So we select all floors and use the surface attribute command in the diaphragm tab. We need to create a plate element, an isotropic plate element of 0.1 millimeter, which is roughly one-tenth of the steel deck thickness. Select the plate and enable the diaphragm effect. At this stage, we need only to create the wall that will receive the wind load. So we will isolate the wall where we want to have a wind load applied. And create the surface of the wall. This time we will use without a diaphragm and use a one-way distribution. And we want the wind to be distributed on the columns. And create the surfaces. The last step in the definition of the geometry is to create the bracings. We will isolate the walls on the contour of the building. To make it easier to create the bracings. and create the X bracings. And finally, the last bracing. In order to complete the structural model, we need to define the, the support conditions and assign the steel shapes to the elements of the model. So we will define the support conditions. We select the base joints. And use the joint attributes to define a pin support. Then we can uh, assign the steel shapes to the beam. So we select the beams, use the member attributes command, and create a standard 
steel shape. Uh, w360 by 85. As we are here, we will create the other shapes we need in the model. We'll create a square HSS of 118 millimeters for the columns. And an angle of 152 millimeters for the bracings. So select the W shape for the beams and assign the end releases. We can assign in the same way the column shapes. We will use the special selection to select all vertical elements and use the member attribute command and select the HSS shape. We need to assign the, the angle section to the bracings. So we will first select all horizontal and vertical members and select the bracings by inverting the selection. So we can associate the angle and assign the end releases. At this stage, the structural model is complete. We need to apply some loads. The first step is to create uh, the basic loads. So we'll create a dead load. A live load. A snow load. And finally, a wind load. We'll define the gravity load as the dead load along the negative y direction. And then we can assign the loads to each to the floor and the roof. So we'll use a surface pressure load to define the dead load on the mezzanine and the roof. We'll define a live load on the mezzanine. A snow load on the roof. And finally, the wind load on the wall.
the last thing we need before analyzing the model is to combine the loads we just created. So we'll use the load combination command and we'll use the assistant and create the load combinations according to the National Building Code of Canada. I'm going to review the load combinations generated. We'll check the model if we forgot something. Everything seems okay. So we can launch the analysis. We need to, now to check the analysis results. We will hide the loads so we can view the results better. We can show the results on screen for the entire model. We can limit the results to a given load combination. We'll adjust the scale. In the same way, we can Check the bending moments. The results can also be showed in spreadsheets. Or graphically, one member at a time. Here also, we can show the results for a single load combinations or as an envelope.